And welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart a Dell XPS 13 9370. This is the i7 8th gen and it is a 13 inch slimline laptop. So to begin we're going to need a small Torx bit. This is a T5 and we're also going to be leaving the LCD complete so uh, just be advised that we're not going to be removing the bezel or breaking open the LCD at all. Uh, we're going to be leaving it as a complete unit because um, these are definitely a pain in the butt. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is flip it over. And on the bottom here, we have a number of Torx T5 screws, and we're just going to go ahead and remove them. All right, now that we have the screws out of the bottom case, we can go ahead and remove it. Uh, one uh, thing I want to point out on the Dell's laptops in the bottom case there's a service tag it's usually abbreviated ST uh, you can go to the Dell support website and just enter your service tag and give you warranty and specification information for your laptop so it's, it's a nice resource that Dell has that uh, quite a few other manufacturers do not okay so to remove this bottom cover um, I like to start at the back where you can kind of get your fingers in there and you're just going to kind of pry up until that bottom case starts popping up. Boo. There we go. So it's sometimes the little catches can be a little bit weird. Um, so this one acted like it had some screws still kind of stuck in it, but it's just you know, a number of these little snaps all the way around. So once you have that bottom case off, we can see the inside of the laptop. And it looks like we're gonna be switching from a Torx T5 to a small Phillips bit. Uh, I'm gonna use a 2.5. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we wanna go ahead and remove the battery. So it looks like there's a number of battery mounts. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll go ahead and remove the, looks like five screws that are holding on this uh, battery. And then the connector just kind of looks like it's a simple pull out type. All right, so that top screw kind of felt like it had something behind it. But once you have that battery kind of loose, you can also go ahead and just use your fingernails to push that connector out and just kind of slides out laterally. And that is how you remove the battery. All right, let's give a quick look to the rest of the laptop. Uh, your SSD is pretty um, pretty easy to get to. Uh, so once you have that bottom case off, it looks like it's quite easy to replace uh, the SSD or the fan and heatsink assembly. Uh, touchpad looks like it's pretty um, reachable. You might end up having to replace or remove the keyboard. Let's see if they have screws under here. And that's hard to tell. I believe that's it adhered in. Um, but it does look like a keyboard is replaceable. I see screws holding on the back bracket. Um, a lot of laptops have like just melted plastic rivets holding it in. Um, but in this one, it does look like you can replace the keyboard if you need to. A uh, Wi-Fi card looks like it's integrated onto the motherboard. So if you're having Wi-Fi issues, it looks like in this case you would have to replace the motherboard or have some kind of repair service do that. All right, so we'll go ahead and start by removing the SSD bracket. So I'll just remove the one screw and then we'll slide that bracket out and that'll give us access to the SSD 
and and maybe a thermal pad underneath it. So just get your fingernails underneath and just kind of wiggle it back and forth as you're pulling out of the connector. And it's a very, very thin thermal pad on the bottom there. Um, it's not really necessary. Uh, I don't know why manufacturers do it, but if you don't have a thermal pad for your SSD, don't worry about it. Because um, I think most of the tests that they've ever done, done on these, they don't get hot. Um, and then this particular SSD is an NVMe. Um, and it looks like a 2280. So if you need to replace your SSD, that is the interface and size. All right, so I think now we'll go ahead and remove the fans and heat sink assembly. So it looks like it's partially underneath this video cable. So we'll go ahead and pull up and remove the cable that's over the fan here. And we'll go ahead and pull both of those fan connectors out. So it's just these two white connectors. Just use the notches with, and pull with your fingernails and those will pop right out. All right. So it looks like there's about seven screws holding that on. Um, it doesn't matter which order you take these screws out, but if you're reinstalling with new thermal paste, you want to keep uh, a crosshatch pattern uh, when you tighten these down, and it's numbered. You get one, two, three, four uh, to tighten that heat, uh, thermal paste down evenly. But as far as removal, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you can get a closer look. There's a one, two, three, and four on that heat sink. So as long as you tighten it down in that order, um, it should be fine as far as the thermal paste. All right, so it looks like the fans are just kind of held onto the heat sink with a little bit of uh, overhanging adhesive there. So we'll go ahead and remove the fans first. And with the heat sink, you want to kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle as you're pulling up. Um, especially if the thermal paste is older, it can sometimes be a pretty strong adhesive. So just uh, wiggle back and forth as you're putting some upward pressure on it. And you should be able to release your heat sink no problem. All right, giving a quick look here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now take out the motherboard from the palm rest. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go along and just disconnect everything that's connected to the motherboard, um, except for the pram battery that's gonna stay put. So we'll go ahead and start removing some of these connectors. Looks like the touchpad uh, or digitizer, one of those. Uh, right here, it's got a flip up type connector, so you just flip that up with your fingernail, pull the ribbon out, and flip it back down. Same with the touchpad. And the speaker connection is just a simple pull out type, so just get your fingernails on that little connector and pull it straight out. And there is a very small connector here. So it could be helpful to have a tool for these really small ones. And we'll flip it back down. Uh, your two Wi-Fi antennas just pop straight up and off. Nothing too scientific there. All right, and then the video cable looks like it's held on by a couple Phillips head screws, uh, kind of keeping that bracket in place. We'll go ahead and remove those screws. And the bracket. And we're gonna use the little loop here that they supplied to pull straight up on that connector. 
and that will release the LCD assembly. Uh, so if we want to remove the LCD now, it's just uh, four screws to detach the hinges from the palm rest assembly. But for now, we're gonna leave it in place and just work on removing the motherboard. It does look like there is some kind of ribbon here. So this type, um, I believe that is the, oh, that's the audio port. So that type just pops straight up and off. So just flick it up with your fingernail and it'll come straight out. One last check for ribbons. I don't see any more. Uh, there is one that looks like it's maybe on the back of the motherboard if it's connected to the motherboard. So after we release the screws, we'll just lift up real carefully and see if there's something connected on the back here. So now we'll just go ahead and remove all the motherboard screws. All right, so we got all the motherboard screws out. Um, I did have to switch to a smaller Phillips bit for the, I believe that's the USB-C port. Um, so just keep in mind that these two screws, they chose a smaller head for some reason. All right, so we can go ahead and start wiggling on that motherboard and see if we have it free. And once you get it loose, we'll just slowly flip it over. All right, so it's, that ribbon was uh, for the keyboard apparently. And this particular motherboard um, just has integrated RAM, so it's definitely not upgradable as far as your memory. So just keep that in mind if you plan on upgrading, um, it's integrated into that motherboard. All right, so we have a good view of the palm rest. It looks like the speakers are just a couple of screws. Uh, LED strip looks like it's just kind of stuck on with some adhesive. And it's quite a bit of uh, small Phillips screws to replace the keyboard, uh, but it does look replaceable, which is nice. All right, so now we're gonna work on uh, releasing the uh, LCD assembly. And we're gonna switch back to our 2.5. And the easiest way to do this is open up the display so that uh, it will just come apart after we remove those Phillips head screws. If you do try to take the screws off while the laptop is closed, you're not gonna be able to separate the two pieces because the hinges are gonna catch and kind of hang over the palm rest. So generally, when you're removing a screen, uh, you need to open up the LCD all the way to clear the palm rest. So using your free hand, um, support the laptop from underneath, especially when you're removing the last two screws. And this way uh, you won't break any of the screw connectors. Because they tend to be slightly fragile and if you have the whole weight of the laptop just holding onto that one screw, it can sometimes break. Okay, got the screws out and we can separate the LCD. And another thing to note, uh, let me see if I can find it on the board here. Your power button is integrated onto the motherboard. Um, there is no separate power button. So if, you're, if you've diagnosed your laptop with having a bad power button or there's um, some other issue for it not turning on, um, I would suspect that you're gonna need another motherboard because they've integrated a few things into this motherboard that can sometimes come separate on other laptops. Um, you know, the Wi-Fi 
processor, RAM, and power button. So I guess they do that for simplicity, weight, make it a slim line, but um, it doesn't help when something goes wrong. So just keep that in mind. Power button integrated onto the motherboard. All right, so the last thing here is the LCD. And due to how thin it is, um, a lot of these slimline laptops will have a thin LED LCD that's um, kind of pasted with some pretty strong adhesive to either the bezel or the back cover. So if you plan on replacing your LCD, I would do it as a complete unit um, because you to just replace a component on the inside, you're definitely gonna need a heat gun, um, some precision prying tools, and a lot of patience. And even then you might still break your screen. So if you need to replace your screen on this, um, I would definitely recommend uh, replacing it as an assembly if you can. So that is it. That is how you disassemble a Dell XPS 13 9370. So if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.